Konnichiwa, Kumusta, and Dzień Dobry, which is Polish and I just found out should be pronounced Dzień Dobry. So sorry to my Polish friends for butchering your language. Tell me how to say hello in your language and I'll include it in my next video. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts and today I'm gonna tackle something that I've been dreading. I've been intimidated by and that is Aircrete. I set out a couple months ago to try some aircrete projects and none of them were a hundred percent successful. I gained some good information, I got some great suggestions and feedback in the comments and I made some mistakes too but but that's part of the way that I learn. So I'm going to make March the month of aircrete. My goal is to figure out what I'm doing wrong and start doing it right and then make a couple of projects from the material. For my first video today, I'm gonna to get my foam density right. I've done some research and I know what density I need to look for and I suspect that Franken foam, my foam generator, isn't producing quite the density that I need. So I'm gonna test that out, make some modifications, and then hopefully get some foam created correctly. And then with that foam, I want to make some air creep blocks. Next week's video, I'm going to use those blocks to make a rocket stove. Yeah, big surprise there. I've actually gotten a lot of comments requesting an air creep rocket stove. I want to see how this material performs for creating a rocket stove. And I suspect it's going to be really effective. Two weeks from now, I'm going to make an Aircrete Forge, which is something that I promised in 2021. I've got a big crucible I want to use, and I'm going to design that forge to fit that crucible. And my last project for the month is going to be a cast Aircrete rocket stove. I'm actually going to do that in a stackable form, so I'll build a series of blocks that stack up to create an L-type rocket stove. So. I'm excited about that as well. And then finally, after all of this experimentation and practice, I want to refine the design for Frankenfoam. A lot of the foam generators I've seen on the internet seem complicated to me. Often the tank is separate from the foaming wand. I want to see if I can simplify that design and make it easier to build all in one unit and in doing so also make it less expensive. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, I'm excited to be tackling this material in a series of videos here because I think that's what it's gonna take for me to get this thing figured out. And of course, I'm gonna show you my successes and failures along the way. You know that's how I roll. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you samples of some of the early aircrete that I created. What I think works and what I think identifies some of the problems I was having with my mixture. But first, a quick word about memberships. I turned memberships on here on YouTube last week, which allows me to offer you some extra content if you want. I did want to reiterate that that is not going to change the amount of free content that I create here on YouTube. But if you want to get a little bit more in depth behind the scenes of how I use these tools I'm creating here. That's what's gonna happen in the membership section of the channel. So I'm filming this video the same day that I posted my first membership video. So I'm happy to say that I have my first member, Sarah Gardner. Thank you so much, Sarah, and thank you for the encouragement. Here's your shout out. Sarah Gardner! Okay, they're not always going to be that epic, but Sarah, yours is because you were the first. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the community tab. So here's a block from my very first batch of Aircrete that I did with the foam forms. It's double thick. The middle is my last pour. Got a double thick and a single thick on the foam forms. 
And then I had some leftover that I poured into a 2x4 form of that same batch. My first sample is pretty rigid. The single thickness version of this actually snapped in half pretty easily. Oh. So still pretty brittle. But if I used this without putting pressure on it like that, it would probably have been okay. This stuff, however, no strength to that at all. I used a foam to concrete ratio that someone had suggested in the comments, and I just think there wasn't enough concrete in that mixture. The foam held up okay, but there's just not enough strength left here, obviously. Even in the double thickness piece, it just goes to powder. Clearly a failure. Now that may have had something to do with my foam. And then this block was part of the same batch and it's nice and light. There's some rigidity to it, but it still gives into pressure. So, conceivably, the problem was with the thickness, and something like this might not be able to be used structurally, but it could definitely be used as a piece of insulation. So, perhaps not a complete failure there. Here's some air creed I mixed up this morning, and I think there's just not enough cement in here. It's already shrunk down about an inch. I'm gonna let this cure and see what it's like. And here's some of the foam that I made this morning. And it's still um, holding up. However, I can tell that it's, it's losing its density. So, still doesn't have that shaving cream consistency that it started out with, so some of those bubbles are Popping. The reason you want dense foam for aircrete is because these bubbles should be supporting the structure of the concrete while it cures. They need to last long enough so that they support that concrete matrix, if you will, with the air inside it, and that's what makes aircrete special. Some of that foam had turned back into water in the bottom of this carton as well. So this is actually one quart. With the right density, this quart should weigh three ounces. So I've got my scale, I'm gonna make some foam and then get a weight on it. One other thing on this prototype that I probably don't need is two valves. I've got the PVC ball valve and the uh, air hose valve. I could probably get away with just one of those. All right, for now I'm gonna turn them on and uh, generate some foam. get a quart of this and then weigh it. Let's tear this with an empty one and switch to all right so I've only got 0.6 ounces there. So at 0.6 ounces my foam is definitely not dense enough. All right, it's time to crack open Franken foam. My early experimentation with Franken foam, <laughs> I just cut them in half whenever I needed to make an adjustment, which is why I've got several couplings on this tube. I did install a threaded fitting here that's gonna allow me to crack them open without having to cut them up. But to do that, I'm gonna need Big Mike. Here are my two halves of Franken foam. Got the foaming section and the reservoir section. Inside my foaming section right now, I have these Scotch Brite stainless steel scrubbing pads, which are fairly dense. And so, what I'm going to replace them with, in my hopes of increasing the density of the foam, is some steel wool. 
much finer in terms of the mesh on that. But this is not ordinary steel wool. This is actually stainless steel wool because if you just use ordinary steel wool, it will rust. In my reservoir section here, Frankenfoam, I have this pipe which comes all the way through this end. So that distributes the air out of smaller holes. I think I can shorten this section, really. I only need about this much reservoir to make this happen. I want to maximize the amount of foam generation I can get. All right, I am gonna go ahead and do some major surgery on Franken foam here. But since I'm still in the prototyping phase here, I'll breeze through the specifics for now. I'll do a full build on this once I've got all the kinks worked out. I had the holes in the end like this. I think I'm gonna try having them along the length of the pipe, kind of spread out that way. Trains here. I'm actually only putting these holes through one side of the pipe. Got that twisted in, and my diffusion holes are facing down. So my Franken foam section before was the liquid zone. This time it's going to be the foam zone. So my diffusion pipe comes in about this distance here. So I'm actually gonna fill the rest of this with both pot scrubbers and still wool. So I'm actually gonna start with two of the pot scrubbers, pick the ones that are kind of in the best shape. I'm gonna push those down until they hit the cap on the diffusion pipe. I'm gonna follow that up with as much stainless steel wool as I can get in there. And instead of putting it in kind of like rolled up, which would have weak spots in there, I'm gonna push it in like this. So there really aren't any weak spots where the air can find its way through. This is so much more dense than those pot scrubbers. I'm actually gonna stop with those four. We'll see how this goes. using my cutoff bushing here. Hopefully this will be enough surface area to hold this joint. Work for the prototype, at least. Get a good twist on this. And there is my reservoir and diffusion chamber. Got the foam section here. Now the last thing I need to add is my valve. Today's audio track provided by Wind. She used to be part of Earth, Wind and Fire. This is her solo album. There's just one last thing.
It's alive! One thing I'm not happy about with this design right now is that it's sitting on my air hose. So that's definitely something I want to think about in the final design is how do I attach the air and it's probably going to mean putting an elbow here. All right, I'm going to turn this on and make some foam. All right, this is definitely more like shaving cream. I think I need to tighten that cap a little bit. All right, just loaded another batch of liquid in here. And I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit with big mic. See if I can cut down on that bubbling out here. All right, let's try it again. My first batch actually still weighed six ounces per quart. So I mixed up my liquid with a little bit more of the foaming agent. Yeah, this is definitely more dense, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna get a weight on this. I can tell that the density is much better, but I can't get it to weigh anymore. <laughs> so I'm gonna open up the front of this and put the rest of the stainless steel wool in. All right, so I'm going from four to eight. All right, so that fills up that cavity nicely. I've left this elbow just dry fit so I can twist it around. There's no pressure really at that point anyway, so, but it is how I hook it on the bucket. All right, cleaned out my bucket. So that was two cups. Alright, so the weight is still the same on this. I'm actually going to jettison this whole weight thing. I'm just going to see if this stuff makes air creep. This is definitely the consistency of shaving cream. So I think I'm just going to stop trying to get this to weigh what it's supposed to weigh and mix up some air creep and see if it works. This is definitely the best consistency I've gotten yet. <laughs> Although clearly a threaded connection isn't going to work for that reservoir, so it may need to be a valve. So my first batch that I poured into the milk carton forms, a few telltale signs are the slump on the carton to the left there. You can see it's settled down in, the foam is broken down, and the flat carton here, you can see how the surface is just cracked up. There was so much foam in there, the cement wasn't able to form a matrix that's supported by foam. Instead, basically you have balls of cement surrounded by foam, which basically turns it into dust. I've actually decided I'm not gonna use the cartons for forms. These milk carton forms worked okay, but I really think they were extra work. I'm just gonna do some two by four forms and on the, the zip, which has that vinyl layer in it. So I am going to rip the end off to get rid of this rounded edge. That'll give me tighter corners where the two by fours are joined to the sheathing and I won't have to cock those joints. It'll make it easier to take those forms apart. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to build my stove on a eight and a half by 11 platform. So I'll need some two and a half by three and a half inch blocks, some two and a half by 11 inch blocks, and some two and a half by eight and a half inch blocks. I'm also going to pour a flat one and a half inch by eight and a half by 11 inch base 
to cover up the firebox, I'm going to pour one eight and a half by eight and a half inch square with a three and a half by three and a half hole in the middle. So I'm going to build up my forms using the zip sheathing and two by fours that I've ripped down to two and a half inches wide. My blocks are going to be two and a half by two and a half and then whatever length I need. I wasn't as efficient with this form work given that those overhangs represent blocks I can't cast. But I've got plenty of two by fours left and if I need to trim up some more, I can. I'm gonna leave these longer so I can have more options for different block sizes in the future. All right, my forms are complete. And now I'm gonna coat them with a release agent. There's lots of options for that, but I'm going to use chainsaw bar oil just because it's something I have on hand. It's a thicker oil and it should stick really well to the surface. My makeshift brush made out of an old sponge and duct tape is a little bit awkward. So I track down a foam brush and that should do the job. This is pretty time consuming and I'm out of oil. So I'm actually gonna switch to some spray canola oil. This is a lot faster and it's also organic, <laughs> so probably a little more environmentally friendly than the bar oil. All right, I'm gonna let this soak in a little bit while I mix up my air crete. All right, now I'm gonna mix up my cement. This is too wet, so I'm gonna sprinkle in a little more cement. Okay, I'm happy with this consistency. Now for the foam. For my foam mix, since I'm just using what is effectively dish soap, even though it's professional, I'm gonna use a higher ratio of dish soap to water as compared to something that's designed to make aircrete, like Drexel, for example. So the ratio that I've been having success with is one ounce of dish soap to 16 ounces of water. I'm gonna mix this very gently to distribute. Make sure my valve is closed and then add it to Frankenfoam. I'm gonna add a little Teflon tape to this thread to see if I can get this to be a little less leaky. I still may go with the valve when I do the final design so I can really get a positive closure when this end is under pressure. I'm just gonna hand tighten this instead of going to big mic. I'm gonna have my mixer ready as the foam goes in, because I'm gonna mix it into the concrete as it's made. The Teflon tape is definitely helping, even with a hand-tightened fit there, so this may be an option.
So you can see how it's holding to the stirrer there. It's like a cake batter. A very even consistency on color and my concrete is about doubled in size. I'm sure I'm gonna scrape the bottom here. All right, I'm gonna get it in the forms. Some reinforcement here because this will be under some extra stress. All right, I'm gonna mix up another batch. I think this may have been a little on the foamy side. We'll have to see if these slump down or not. Right now, the bubbles are nice and tight. That's what I'm looking for. Too much foam or not enough cement, and the mixture will collapse. All right, I'm gonna keep an eye on this foam as it goes in, because I, I want to try and gauge a specific amount that I need. I've got about two inches of concrete in the bottom of the bucket, and I'm gonna add maybe five inches of foam. I definitely think this is too foamy. Actually went a little further with the foam than I wanted to. Turn the valve the wrong way. One thing you can do in this situation is sprinkle a little extra cement on the top. It'll actually break down the bubbles. You wanna limit that, but it will allow it to thicken up. All right, that's better. It was looking a little bit like gray soap. <laughs> we need to see some consistency in that cement. All right, I'm gonna pour. All right, one more batch. I like working in these small batches though, because it's letting me really get a sense for how much foam and how much cement I need to be using. Until I get that figured out exactly, I'm gonna make a little bit at a time. This is my favorite consistency so far. It's a little gritty because the cement mixed in later kind of clumped up. About two inches on the bottom and I'm gonna Cautiously add foam here.
right, I'm happy with that consistency. I'm gonna pour the last block. Cement is not the most environmentally friendly building material, but because we're creating a device that allows for greater sustainability, I'm justifying its use. All right, so now I wait. I'm gonna close this video out here and I'm gonna let these cure for probably 48 hours before I unform them. They'll need a full 28 days to cure, but I can probably use them for my rocket stove build before then. I'll come back tomorrow and spray these with some water. Just a watering can, just to add some more moisture in here. That's how concrete cures. The wetter it is, the stronger it becomes. So I'll do that probably once or twice before I unform it. So the next video will start out with the unforming process and then the rocket stove build. That's if everything works out. I have a feeling I may need to recast a couple of pieces. Perhaps that first batch of aircrete was too foamy. But if those do come apart when I unform it, I'll recast those ahead of the next video so we can get right into the build. Special thanks to my members and patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to see extra short form content about the day to day of how I use these devices in my backyard, you can check out the links in the description below or click the join button below this video to become a member. Of course, no obligation to do that. I'm gonna to continue to make free content here on YouTube as long as I'm living. As always, my mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. Like and share and subscribe if you haven't already done that. And I'll see you next Saturday.